The Lenovo Legion Go is a fantastic handheld. Standing out from the crowd with its large screen, powerful processor and graphics plus detachable joysticks. However, from my perspective, there are two key issues. First, the relatively small battery, which lasts only about an hour and a half when running AAA titles. Second, the challenging process of upgrading its RAM, as you have to replace the soldered memory chips and modify the BIOS. I think this handheld would be great if it were equipped with at least 32 gigabytes of memory and had an extra slot to attach another 32 gigabytes of SODMM. That would turn it into a fantastic workstation and wouldn't add much cost to the manufacturer, but it would certainly differentiate the product from its competitors. While there are a few videos covering RAM upgrades on YouTube, no one has attempted a battery upgrade until now. There is actually a lot of unused space inside the device. And I believe the intermediate frame is just taking up space unnecessarily. Removing it could allow for a larger battery or more modifications. The challenge with upgrading the battery lies in finding the right type of cells. The original battery is a rarely ion model rated at 3.88 V, custom made for the Legion Go. After weeks of research, I only managed to find used batteries for sale, one listing on eBay and another on Saibinan.com, a Turkish site. The latter was posted in January 2024 as an original part from a disassembled Legion Go handheld. Fortunately, it was still available, and with the help of my friend in Istanbul, I managed to purchase it for just over $30. Quite a bargain. When the battery arrived, I took it apart to see how it was built. I found that the contacts were tack welded to the battery management system, BMS, likely to avoid exposing the battery to heat and to streamline assembly. Let me tell you, BYD, the battery manufacturer, makes high-quality components. The electronic parts were all properly soldered and welded, and I was impressed with the overall build quality of the Lenovo handheld. However, cutting the tack-welded contacts off the PCB proved more difficult than expected. It didn't go as smoothly as I had hoped, as you can see from the photos. Before proceeding with the mod, I had to order a battery tack welder and a few other tools. Once ready, I began the mod by removing the handheld's backplate, which was easy enough, being held by just six Phillips screws and some plastic clips. Next, I removed the plastic intermediate frame that guides antennas and cables to free up space inside. I then placed the stripped battery cells on top of the original battery and measured the extra height. For the custom back cover, I used available 3D design software. Of course, it's better to use something more specialized for this task, rather than general purpose tools like 3DS Max. After multiple attempts, firmware upgrades to my 3D printer, and various adjustments, I finally printed a high-quality custom cover for my modded handheld. With everything installed, I tested the results of the increased battery capacity. Running Cyberpunk 2077 at playable settings, 30 to 40 FPS. I extended the battery life to nearly four hours. Quite an improvement, isn't it? However, there's a downside. The original BMS and the handheld's BIOS don't seem to recognize the increased battery capacity. The charge percentage drops rapidly to 7% but the device keeps running for double the time it used to before shutting down. I was hoping the BMS would recalibrate itself after a full charge slash discharge cycle, but as of making this video, it still behaves the same. That's where I am for now. If you enjoyed this modding journey, don't forget to like the video and subscribe for more.